Okay, guys, I hope all of you are well. I think we'll start now. I'm going to start with the study unit for the ISLM model. Let's look at the LM curve. The approach used is where the SARB directly targets the interest rates. In other words, your interest rates are autonomous. Interest rates does not depend on the level of income and output. Increases and decreases in interest rates are determined by the, by the central bank. And therefore, interest rates are autonomous. Autonomous because it is not influenced by Y at all. Actually, your LM curve, now you remember your IS curve, that represents activities that, that took place in the goods market. The LM curve now represents events that takes place in the financial markets. Right? So, so one IS curve, goods market, the LM curve, the financial markets. And therefore, because your interest rates is relevant in the financial market, isn't that so? And the interest rates we know is now determined by the central bank. Right, example, when Y increases, the demand for money increases, which leads to an increase in the interest rate. So, so, so when you demand more money, and as you keep on demanding to, to prevent to prevent inflation, right, your, your interest rates must increase to ensure that the money demanded remains equal to the supply of money. Who supplies money, guys? Who supplies money? The South African Reserve Bank or the Central Bank. So, so therefore, when the demand for money increases, it leads to an increase in interest rates, and this happens because you want you want to you want the demand for money to be equal to the supply. You don't want there to be one higher than the other. And it can lead to instability. It could lead to instability. So if there's an increase in the demand for money, what would happen is that your interest rates will increase. And it, it does so to ensure that your money demanded is equal to the money supply. And independent money supply. Independent means outside of Y, right? Outside of the market. Independent means outside of the market, and uh, we're talking about central bank. Now, because we said, if you look at here, we said that your your, your LM curve is 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 determined by the by the central bank. It is outside the market. It is independent, given an independent money supply. So it's not influenced by by Y. It's not influenced by the level of income and output Y. So therefore, we have a perfectly horizontal line. The LM curve is perfectly horizontal line that would suggest no matter what the level of income and output is, it does not it does not affect the, uh, the LM curve. The central bank determines the interest rate, which affects the cost of credit and loans, which also affects the demand for money and the quantity of money. Obviously, the, if the central bank increases the interest rates, the cost is going to, cost of credit is going to increase, the demand for money is going to decrease, and the quantity of money available will decrease. So what we're saying is that the LM curve will be a perfectly horizontal line. Unlike the IS curve, the IS curve was sloping from left to right, downward sloping from left to right, because your, your, your goods market is influenced by the level of income and output. Your investments will depend on why. Your consumption will depend on why. Government spending will depend on why. Okay? All those components are in the goods market. So there is a a positive relationship between autonomous components and the level of income and output, hence the downward sloping curve. Here, there is no relation. There is no relation between your, your LM curve and the level of income and output, simply because your interest rates are determined by the central bank. What causes shifts in the LM curve? Your original LM curve is at interest rate I0. If there's an increase in your interest rates to I1, your LM curve shifts upwards to LM1. So what causes up, uh, uh, shifts in the LM curve? Changes in the interest rates. A high interest rate will shift the LM curve upwards. A lower interest rate will shift the LM curve. A parallel downward shift in the LM curve. Remember in the goods market, we said interest rates, change in interest rates because movement along the IS curve. Changes in, uh, in autonomous spending will cause shifts in the IS curve. So here, what will cause, uh, what will cause changes in the LM curve? Your interest rates. The higher the interest rate, there will be a parallel upward shift in the LM curve. Decrease in the interest rates, there will be a parallel downward shift in the LM curve. So, so having discussed the IS curve, the LM curve, where, the, where these two curve intersect is your equilibrium in the goods and financial market. You have high on, high on the vertical axis, interest rates in the vertical axis, you have Y on the horizontal axis. 
the diagram above reflects the ISLM model. I is down the slope from left to right. We know why. Your LM curve is perfectly horizontal. We know why. Where those two, two curves intersect at point A, that is your equilibrium point. And at point A, we have your, your, your indicate the financial market and the goods market are in equilibrium. At point A, the financial markets and the goods market is in equilibrium. But remember, equilibrium does not necessarily mean that the economy is at full employment. Why if? You can, now this is very important, you can have equilibrium in the economy, but that does not necessarily mean that you're going to have full employment. So you can have equilibrium and be less than full employment. Then you have endogenous and endogenous variables on page, page 136. What are your endogenous variables? You've got C is equal to CO plus YD. CO, CYD is induced, CO is autonomous. So the YD part of the consumption function is endogenous. The CO is exogenous on the, on, on the right hand side. Investment has two parts as well. You have the dependent, one part of investment is dependent on Y. So that is, that is now endogenous. And on the right hand side, you have that part of investment that depends on, on, on factors outside the market. Factors such as expectations, business confidence, political and social factors that, that will affect investments. That's your exogenous investment. So remember, Consumption has induced and exogenous, induced and uh, autonomous. Uh, investments have induced and autonomous. Government is totally exogenous. Government is totally exogenous. It's not, it does not depend on the level of income at all. Then you have your taxes. Right? Simple thing is, taxes is also exogenous. For this model, for the purposes of this module 2602, Make the assumption that taxes are perfectly ex taxes are exogenous. Now, using the ISLM model to illustrate how fiscal policy can be can be used to reach full employment. Then we talk about fiscal policy. Right? We don't confuse fiscal policy with monetary policy. So we need to use fiscal policy to move the economy towards full employment. So use of fiscal policy to achieve full employment. Example: an increase in government spending. Your original I scale was was IS. Your LM curve is LM. Both curves intersect at point A, and your equilibrium level of income and output is Y0. On the vertical axis, you've got interest rates, and the horizontal axis, you've got Y, and your interest rate is I. Point of origin is zero. Now, you, using fiscal policy, you will move the economy closer to, closer to full employment. It means there will be an increase in, in government spending in this example. An increase in government spending will cause a change in this and in the IS curve, I told you that. A change in interest rates will cause a movement along. So an uh, increase in government spending will shift the IS curve to the right, to IS1, and it cuts the LM curve at a new point, which is B. So the economy moves along, along the LM curve from A to B. So you have a new equilibrium point B and a new equilibrium level of income and output, YF. So by increasing government spending, Right, you, you, your, your, your eyes curve shifts to the right, and we can now get to full employment. This is just an example how to move to full employment. And now we're looking at a decrease in the interest rates. And we talk about interest rates, we talk about monetary policy. Remember that. When we talk about government spending, taxation, and consumption, we're talking about the IS curve. Interest rates, the money, so in other words, intervention by the, by the central bank. So therefore, we have your LM curve, at interest rate I0, your LM curve is LM. Your IS curve will not change. You, I sort of, sort of label that downward sloping curve, right? Eh? It it's the IS curve, not label. Please forgive me for that. It should be IS. You all know that, right? So the IS curve cuts the LM curve for interest rates I0 at point A. Given interest rate I0, that's set by the, by the central bank. And that, and that interest rate, your, 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 your IS curve cuts the LM curve at point A, and your level of income and output is Y0. Given interest rate I, I0, the, the equilibrium level of income and, income and output in the economy is Y0, and the equilibrium point is A. If the central bank decides, if the central bank decides to now decrease the interest rate from I0 to I1, so the new LM curve is now LM1. And we said earlier on, that your, your interest rates will cause shifts in the LM curve. An increase in the interest rates will cause an upward shift in the LM curve. 
a decrease in the initiative called a downward shift in the atom curve. In this example, we have a decrease from IO to I1, and therefore we have a downward shift in the atom curve. It cuts now the IS curve at a point B. At point B is your equilibrium point, and we have full employment on the horizontal axis. So a decrease in, in interest rates has now led to full employment. So your output level increased from Y0 to YF. And full employment simply means that all your resources is fully utilized and nothing is left idle. Now we're looking at the impact of a of fiscal contraction now. So remember we, we said to you we have, we have fiscal expansion, fiscal contraction, monetary expansion, monetary contraction. But remember fiscal will involve the highest curve, monetary will affect the LM curve. So we impact a fiscal policy in other words. What if there's an increase in taxes? Increase in taxes clearly, clearly will, will decrease your disposable income, your consumption will decrease, your, 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 your demand for goods and services will decrease, and your output level will decrease. So there's going to be a leftward shift in the IS curve. In other words, there's going to be a decrease in the level of income and output. So the original, the original you, you have, your interest rates are going to remain the same. That won't change because we're talking about fiscal policy here. Where the two, two curves intersect is A. Okay, so equilibrium point is A, your level of income and output is Y. Now, if there's an increase in taxes, as the chain of events shows the bottom, your disposable income will decrease, your consumption will decrease, demand for goods and services will decrease, and your output level will decrease. So that, that suggests that there has to be a, a, a leftward shift in the IS curve now. And I told you, all of these, all of these autonomous components, taxes, government spending and so forth will cause shifts in the curves. If taxes increase, right, it will have a negative impact on output. There's a lifted shift in the IS curve to IS1, and move, the economy will move along the IS, along the LM curve from A to A1. So A1 will be a new equilibrium point. Right? Your, your IS curve cuts the LM curve at A1, and you drop that line, you have your new equilibrium level of income output Y1. So remember, your equilibrium point is A1. The equilibrium level of income output is Y1. And there's your chain of events at the bottom. If you put the chain of events in, in any other order, you'll get zero marks for it. You must, follow, you must follow the sequence of events. And there's the explanation, fiscal contraction. Now, the fiscal contraction because of an increase in taxation. There's your explanation. I script shift to the left, right? From IS to IS1. Because at each interest rate, the demand for goods and, uh, goods and equilibrium level income are, are lower. And there's your chain of events, which, which is repeated here. So the impact, impact of taxes will affect the goods market first, resulting in a left shift in the IS curve. Your new equilibrium point is A1, and where the IS curve and the LM curve intersect. As the L IS curve shifts to the left, the economy moves along the LM curve. I told you that. Along the LM curve from point A2. Point one, it moves along the alum curve from point A to point A1. An increase in government spending is an example of an expansion in fiscal policy. Do you agree with that? If your government spending government spending increases, firstly it's government spending, so it must be fiscal policy. If government spending increases, it must be an expansion in fiscal policy. So what is the what is the impact of that on both? Remember the goods market and the financial market don't operate operate in, independently. Right? They don't operate independently. One will affect the other. Always remember, the one market will always affect, there will be spillovers from the goods market onto the financial market. If we're looking, if we, if we're studying the, the, the financial market increasing interest rates, for example, there will be spillovers from the financial market into the goods market. So, so, so you can't look at these markets in, in isolation, as you'll find out now. So what is the impact of an increase of an expansion of fiscal policy? Expansion of fiscal policy will mean increase in government spending. G increases, Z increases, and Y increases. That's straightforward. The second set, the second chain of events, Y increases. The disposable income increases. The consumption increases. You see, there's a relationship between Y, D, and C. Disposable is what you're taking home. You're taking on more income, so that your consumption is going to increase. You see that? That relation. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so also, you know, the relation Y and, and Y and I. We, we, we spoke about that early on. If your, in, if your income increases, your investment is going to increase. It's a positive relation between the two. So now, what is the impact of that, of the goods market and the financial market? 
And remember, the interest rate, your interest rate remains unchanged. We're only, we're only talking about a fiscal policy, but still, what is the impact on the, on, on, on the financial market? An increase in Y, which we take from the financial market, right? if your Y increases, if the level of income and output increases, we're going to, we're going to need more money, isn't that so? To, 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 to fund our, uh, our expansion in, in the level of income and output. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to increase production of goods and services. We need funding for that. So we're going to demand money from the from the commercial bank. So MD increases. If your demand for money increases, your money supply increases. A change in your, your fiscal policy will lead to uh, will also affect the financial market as well. So we look at different different scenarios, right? Different scenarios. Now we have a monetary expansion. Now we had a expansion in fiscal policy. Now we're having a monetary expansion, monetary policy using interest rates. So the only tool available to, to, the, to the central bank is interest rates. And the policy variables available for fiscal policy is government spending, taxation. So, so here we look at monetary, monetary expansion. So we start with the financial sector. So the initial impact is on the it's on the financial market. So a, a monetary expansion, if you want to if you want to expand, right, there must be a decrease in interest rates. By decreasing the interest rates, your your your, your LM curve. Remember the similar a decrease in interest rates because of a downward shift in the LM curve. To LM1 and the new equilibrium is to reach the point A. The LM comes downwards at the new interest rate, I1. The decrease in the interest rate shifts the LM curve down from LM to LM1 and the new equilibrium is reached at, at point A1. If there's a monetary expansion, you must get a decrease in I. So there we are. Your I scale remains the same because we're not dealing with, with, the, with the fiscal policy, we're talking about monetary policy. The original LM curve is LM at the interest rate I. It cuts the IS curve at point A, your out level of income and output is Y. With the decrease in your interest rates, that will cause a downward shift, a parallel downward shift in the LM curve. Right? Given the new interest rate I1, the new curve cuts the IS curve at A1, which is lower. So there's a movement along the economy, along the IS curve from A to A1. When you drop that line, you get a new equilibrium level of income and output Y. Let's look at some revision questions. Which one of the following is not is not an exogenous variable in the ISLM model? Which one? Is it one? The part of investment that is influenced by expectations, business confidence, we did this just now, business confidence and political and social factors. Is that exogenous or endogenous? It's exogenous, sir. It's exogenous. That statement cannot be correct, okay? You want something that's not exogenous. What's the word about number two? It's exogenous. Taxation is, I told you guys just now, taxation, government spending, autonomous consumption, autonomous investments are all exogenous, including yes. taxation. The third one, the level of income and output. Is that exogenous? And Right, so that answer must be correct. Let's, let's look at four. The part of money demand that is influenced by business confidence and expe expectations, just like number one. That's exogenous, right? The correct answer is yes. three. The level of open income is an endogenous variable in the ISLM model. The answer is three. Next question. Option three, yeah, I've got option, option three. Option. Yeah. Uh, no. no. It's, not, it's not option three. So you left B, C, and D, you left out A. Why did you leave out A? According to the ISL model, investment spending will increase if there's a decrease in the stage. Is that, is that statement correct? If your interest rates drop, investment spending increases. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. yes. And or an increase in the level of income and output. Is that true? True. According, yes. According to the ISL model, investment spending will increase if there's a decrease in the interest rates and or an increase in the level of income and output. So if there's an increase in the level of income and output, your investment spending will increase. We said that already. So A is correct. Now you tell me why, what is B? Is B correct or incorrect? You tell me and tell me why. B is correct. It is correct. correct. So, okay, yes. you're right, it is correct. So, so what does opportunity yes. cost, well, what does opportunity cost mean? You choose not to, in, you not choose not to invest. Because of the high cost. 
Look at C. There is a positive relationship between the level of output and income, positive relationship between output and investment spending, and a negative relationship between interest rates and level of spending. True or false? True, yes, absolutely. D. What are capital goods? Motor vehicles, buildings, and so forth. So that's true. One, A, B, C, D is correct. Okay. Uh, put it up so that you can get gets recorded. All right, there's another question for you. Which of the following statements is are correct regarding the IS curve? Is A correct? To derive the AS curve, IS curve, to change the interest rate to determine the effect on the level of income and output. Is A correct? Correct or incorrect? A change in it's correct. It is correct, yes. Come on, guys. Derive the IS curve, we change the level of income and output. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. It's not correct, but I said to you, when you talk about the IS curve, we start with the interest rates. We start with the... Yes. Remember the three diagrams? On, on, the, on the left-hand side, we start with the change in the interest rates from I, I0 to I1. You remember that? So B is incorrect. What about C? C is also incorrect. Also incorrect. What about D? Also incorrect. So therefore, B, C, and D, D is incorrect. So look at the alternatives. Only A is correct, number two. That's the correct answer. And there's the explanation of all of that. You can read it in your own time, right? Let's look at the next question. Which of the following statements is are correct? The increase in investor confidence, right? Increases autonomous investment. We said. Autonomous investment is influenced by investor confidence, uh, business environment, legislation, and all that, remember? And therefore, a downward movement along the IS curve occurs. What causes the movement along the curve? What causes the movement along the curve? Interest rates, changes in interest rates. Changes in the autonomous components like investments will cause a shift in the curve. So therefore, downward movement along the curve is incorrect. It causes a shift, so A is incorrect. B. An increase in investor confidence increases autonomous spending and the IS curve shifts to the right. Is this true? Yeah, it's true. It's correct. It's correct. Good. That is correct. We know that investor con confidence is autonomous spending, increases autonomous spending. Autonomous spending will cause a shift in the curve. Since it's increased in, in confidence, there will be a right to shift in the IS curve. What about C? An increase in investment. Not confidence. correct. It's incorrect. It's incorrect. It's incorrect, sir. No mm. movement. There's no movement along the curve. You understand me? Remember that straight away. It's wrong. What about D? An increase in investor confidence increases the level of income and output, and the IS curve shifts to the right. The correct. It's, it's correct. Sir. Yeah. So the two answers that are correct is B and D. Yes. You agree with me, guys? It's correct. So therefore, the correct option is five. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.